Welcome to the tutorial palettes. In this tutorial I'm going to talk all about palettes which may seem like a simple concept but actually is quite extensive topic with many new ideas. So let's just start at the basics here. Um, when you open Animate or Animate Pro and you look at your color view it'll look something like this. This is what we call basic mode of the color view and you'll see a list of your colors with an example um, beside. Usually when you start you only have the first five colors and the name of this palette is always named after the name of your scene. So our, the name of our scene is Palettes, so this palette will be named Palettes, which is a little confusing. But if the name of your scene is The Simpsons, then your palette name will be The Simpsons. And the way to see the palette list for these colors is to um, click on this button here, which will show you what we call the advanced uh, mode uh, for the color view. And in here you'll see that there's different palettes linked to your scene listed here. So you can scroll through those and obviously these, uh, these palettes were created by me um, earlier. But where are all these palettes saved? Because each of these are a file and I think even just by looking at this you have a sense that these are all linked somewhere. Uh, there's some type of file that calls up all these colors. Well let's take a look at the file structure of a uh, of a typical Animate Pro file. Um, and I believe the Animate file looks exactly the same. So the name of my scene is Palettes because that's the name of the tutorial that I'm creating right now. And in here you see a whole jumble of files which might look a little scary. Um, I think this is mostly a product of Mac where you see these auxiliary files. These they are sort of like ghost files. I'm not sure if they show up in, um, in Windows. Um, and then the main files that we'll look at which are really important is obviously this is the actual file that you would double click on to launch your scene right here. Um, and then you have a few of these folders, the element, environment, frames, job, and palette library. So by default in Animate and Animate Pro, like the palette files for the various palettes that you create are located at the scene level. So they're located directly in this file and it's this folder right here, the palette library. And you'll see a bunch of these files with the extension .plt. So here we have the default one, uh, the rabbit knight, the rabbit, and the text, and those are the ones that we saw. And once again, these files with the tilde at the end are probably just ghost files backups that uh, Mac creates. So those plt files are pretty important because they can be copied and transferred. And if you have Animate Pro stored in different places, and I'll show you how. So First of all, you need to go to your preferences on Mac that's under the Animate Pro menu in Windows that's under the Edit menu. And you have to go to the Advanced tab and check the option Advanced Palette Lists. So now when you create a new palette by clicking on the Add Palette or New Palette button here, instead of getting that small dialog where they just asked you to name your palette in a field like this, you have all these extra options. So let's explore some of those options. So the first section you have in the Create Palette window is the palette location. And there are four locations where you can save your PLT file. The Environment, Job, Scene, or Element folders. And you saw these four folders in the structure I just showed you for your scene. So I'm not going to talk too much about the Environment or Job levels. Um, they're more relevant if you're doing a big animated series. Um, so I'm just going to talk about the scene and element levels. And like I told you before, um, Animate and Animate Pro save all of your palettes, so any palettes created, any PLT files created at the scene level, which is where it's at right now. Um, a good instance for when you would like to link your palettes at the scene level is if you're doing cutout animation. In the industry, um, there are scenes called model scenes that belong to an individual character. And this cutout character usually has its body parts distributed on many different layers. So if you chose element instead of scene, then that means this new palette that you're creating would only be linked to a single layer in your timeline, which means it would only be linked, say, to the rabbit hand or the rabbit foot or the rabbit leg. And that's not very convenient. You want that palette to be accessible for the entire scene. Um, an instance where the element to link your, your new palette to just a single element, um, aka a single layer in the timeline, um, would be when you have many uh, different palettes that you're going to create. And that often occurs if you have many characters and props in the same scene. So you might have a different character and prop 
per layer in your scene and your scene would be better organized if you could link you know the rabbit's palette to the rabbit uh, one of his props palette to that prop one of his animated friends say a hedgehog that hedgehog's palette to the hedgehog layer so it would be mo more organized um, within the scene's file structure itself. So just for example sake I'm going to keep the element location selected um, and when you do this you actually have to select an element from the list here and I keep using the word link the linking is actually done here at the bottom what we're really doing is we're saving the PLT file in this location but wherever you're going to link your file it's a good place to save your file uh, for organization's sake so I'm going to choose the rabbit clean um, layer to link this new palette to and um, just to show you quickly as well if you click on the scene here you get a list of all the palettes that exist for your scene in the element once again you have to choose um, what folder what element folder you want to save that palette that PLT file in and then here you have to name it so I'm gonna name it um, example and then here at the bottom is where the actual linking occurs so I, I basically explained it already above if you're going to link it to your scene this palette will be available for all the layers um, aka all the elements for your scene if you decide to select element palette list this new palette that's called example is only going to be available for the specific element that you selected which is the rabbit clean um, and also I believe it's corresponds to the layer selected here which is the rabbit clean and we'll click OK so as we see here on the rabbit clean layer and we see that example palette um, is now listed under element palettes along with the scene palette so that we still know that that these belong to the scene these belong to the element and we still have the scene palettes available um, if you click off the rabbit clean layer onto the rabbit color layer for example you actually have to click off on the timeline um, it disappears so it really only exists for um, the rabbit clean layer and not for the rabbit color layer or any other layer for that matter and then if we go back to the file structure we'll see that if we go to our scene which is called palettes we go to um, elements which are our layers and we go to rabbit clean that in the palette library, so we have a palette library here at the scene level and a palette library here at the element level, the rabbit clean element, we'll see that there indeed is an example.plt um, file. So this is the palette linked to this element in our entire scene structure. So now let's move on to some easier stuff. I showed you in a previous tutorial how to create color palettes, but let's turn off the advanced palette mode. I'll just show you again one more time. So you just have to click on this plus button here in the color um, view. And once again, you can create a new palette just by entering in the name and pressing OK. And to rename a color palette, there are two ways of doing it. So I'll choose one of the scene palettes here. You can either right click on it and go to the rename item from the right click menu or you can use the color view menu here at the top and go to palettes rename. So you can do that for either. There's also a nifty uh, feature that you have in both Animate and Animate Pro and that's copying and pasting colors and this can be really really um, beneficial in terms of uh, saving time because uh, often many characters from the same animated series or animated film have very similar colors such as the teeth, um, the whites of the eyes, the skin color, but it's just a few differences like the hair and the clothing that you need to change. So it's actually more convenient just to copy and paste some colors from one palette to another. So for example, I could actually just select uh, a few of the colors here, let's say, and just use a simple copy and paste, so Control or Alt C, and then I can switch to a different palette and then do Command or Control V to paste them in just like that. And they keep um, all their names and obviously their RGB color values. Um, in Animate Pro, you also have the option of creating a new swatch, for example, and then actually giving the value of this swatch 
um, the value and name from another color palette and you do that by selecting that new swatch and going to the color view menu and going to colors copy color from and you can select one of the palettes your other palettes are listed here or with the colors in each palette and the name um, available so say I wanted to go to the text and make it uh, this default from the text that was never renamed so actually it looks like the name doesn't get changed but you get all the correct RGB color values so that's another cool way of taking uh, exact color swatches from another color palette so you can also remove color palettes and you do this by selecting your color palette from this list here. So let's look at the text one for example again. And all you have to do is click on this button here, remove palettes. Um, it'll remove it from your actual palette list in the underseen palettes. You can see it's been removed, but it actually doesn't delete the file from that, that scene file structure that I showed you from the palette library. So you can actually re-import the palette again. So it just removes it to clean up your scene a bit, but it's still available. So if you delete a palette that has colors that are linked to zones um, in, say, a character somewhere in your scene, actually I have a, a second clone palette as well, then your character that had the that had colors linked to that palette will all turn red because they no longer have a palette or swatches to link to. So let's undo that. So the next thing I'd like to show you is how to duplicate a color palette. So let's select uh, the rabbit again here and you just have to go to the top view menu, the color view menu, and select palettes duplicate. And here you get the dialog box where you can rename it. I'm just going to keep it as copy so that I remember this is a copy and say OK. So even though both of these um, palettes look identical and have the same color names and color swatches with the same RGB values, they are actually independent though. So if you start uh, changing the color and the names of one palette or adding swatches or deleting swatches, it's going to be independent of its copy. Um, and vice versa, if you change the copy, it'll be independent of the original palette. However, there is a way of sort of semi-linking the palettes, and that is to clone a color palette. So I'm actually going to delete this copy here. But I'm going to reselect my, my rabbit palette and go to the color view menu at the top and go to palettes clone. So the difference here, so I'm going to keep the name clone so you remember it's clone, is that now these are these are partially linked. Um, because the zones that these are colored with here, so if the skin is colored with this, in the clone palette is still linked to the skin swatch that is color that is here, um, and this is useful for actually creating um, tinted palettes um, so that you can get all the colors of the rabbit at night, what he would look like with night shades uh, in bright sun. Um, so you can change all the colors without having to recolor this rabbit. So I'll show you in a minute that you can tint all your swatches and then just by clicking on and off, I think I actually have one here, the rabbit night which I created before, it'll recolor everything for you automatically um, without you having to actually go in there and, and refill in all your zones. So let's go into a rabbit clone and then from the top view menu go to palettes tint panel. Now you have the option of changing one or all the swatches in your color palette and you can change the colors by offsetting them, blending them, or mixing them. So let's select all the swatches for now and then click on the preview option so you can see the colors change as you mix them. Um, and you have the ability to mix the amount by how much, the alpha, the hue saturation value, and your RGB values. So let me just move some of these around to give you an idea. Oh, and you have to change the amount so you can see quite, quite a change there. Um, you can always reset your values at any time if you feel like you've just gone too far. Um, if you want to blend them, you have the ability to blend them with a swatch um, of a different color that you can change the alpha value of as well. You'll see that here. And then you can always go back and change the alpha value at any time as well as the actual um, swatch color. Sort of like that with the 
original colors. You can see the difference as they've been blended with the green. Um, if you mix, it's similar. You have a tint and a base. And uh, let's tint it sort of, say, red, for example. And then you have a base color, a tint and a base, so uh, something like that. And you get a mix in between. Uh, depending on whether it's a bit more advanced, between the, the tint and the base, you make a, a color in between, um, and you can choose whether it's more towards the tint or more towards the base here along the scale. Change the values of either the tint or the base, depending on which one's selected, and uh, get a, a very nice variety mix. Um, if you apply this, obviously you now have this color palette with all those uh, values and your rabbit gets changed in those linked zones automatically if you click on that new palette. So the night, the regular rabbit color and that sort of reddish fiery looking one as if he was sort of standing in front of a, a fire or something like that. Um, you see here and so that way you never have to actually go in and repaint your zones. It's all done for you automatically. So that's a pretty cool feature. So that's it for uh, the first part of palettes. Stay tuned for the next tutorial, palettes part two.